system. Movement number four, the Ode to Joy. Now, many of you guys may have heard this or heard at least the melody, but if you were in band uh, in middle school, you probably played just small excerpts of it. But it's a really interesting piece. Um, by this time, the movement was completely deaf. So it's really incredible that he was able to write this Ninth Symphony. Uh, it is reported, I can't attest to it for sure, but it is reported that uh, when the symphony was first performed, at the end of it, um, there was a standing ovation and Beethoven couldn't hear it. So the, um, the conductor had to turn him around and face the audience so that he could see the reaction of the audience to his music. What is really, really wicked cool about the fourth movement of the Ninth Symphony is that it's the first time ever that symphony, instrumental, and choir are blended. It's the first time that we use a lot of choir within a symphony. Now, there have been before uh, choral performances uh, or plays like the Tango of Messiah during the Baroque. But this was really, an oratorio really is an, or, an oral piece, a vocal piece that is accompanied by sometimes uh, an orchestra, a, a small orchestra, or sometimes um, just a uh, uh, harpsichord piano, you know, something of that extent. But this is the first time that it's happened with a symphony. You would accompany it by the choir. So it is definitely really groundbreaking. Another part that is really groundbreaking is Beethoven is using um, a form of a fuller, a German form of fuller, uh, his uh, German fuller. But then he puts it in a Turkish Mars. Okay. Now, why is that important? Well, Turkey and Germany at the time were historical um, enemies, say the United States and the Soviet Union, in the uh, late and early and mid 20th century, right? So for him to, run, to use this wonderful poem, that is an uh, ode to joy, uh, you'll see when you start reading the lyrics, it's really, you know, really neat. But first, Turkish Mars. It's kind of like extending um, a peace offering to Turkey and to Germany. So it was really, it's, it's a really, really neat, neat uh, piece. Uh, um, it has become since 1989, since the uh, um, fall of the Berlin Wall, when the uh, both the East and West Germans were reunited, it has become almost like an anthem for the reconciliation of the two nations, or the really one nation that was divided. And of course, if you've seen any of the Olympics, uh, especially summer, uh, might be both, but I know definitely the Summer Olympics, it is like the um, what's the word? I'm sorry. Unofficial, thank you, unofficial anthem of the Olympics. Because again, it is, it talks about friendship, it talks about the joy of being together. So, anyways, another thing that's really cool is that if you've heard my whole thing on Beethoven, is I really do believe Beethoven to be the transition between the classical period and the romantic period. And when you start the beginning of this piece, you will see those large dynamic changes very common in the romantic period you know and i'm not talking just small crescendos and very lyrical crescendos that we're used to hearing in the classical period i'm talking large really starts with a huge fortissimo and then just up fortissimo and then just breaks it back up and it's very passionate you know so it's really um, 
yep. you almost have to transition to that next period of the romantic period. So let's not talk about it. Let's listen to it. All right. Here we go, guys. Wonderful, just lows of the cello pen. Mind if I have my water, please? I'm sorry. The cello and basses, just nice low tones.
beautiful orchestra leading in the orchestra from the choir. Read the lyrics to understand why we have to find the answer for the Olympics. Sonnen, sagen er Sonnen, 
millions this is for the whole world all people become brothers where customs firmly divide 
I mean. Thank you for joining me. I hope you join me again next month for. What was it? No, when are we at? What? Well, this was fun. Thank you. See you next month.